We're accelerated geo. We made it to the last day of our chapter, day number six. And this day is all about review because you're going to be able to take your test on Tuesday through Thursday. And honestly, in my opinion, I would say the sooner the better. That way you can go ahead and get it knocked out because I'm sure some of you guys are probably going to have some stuff you really want to catch up on. I would shoot for doing it tomorrow myself, um, but know that you the window, the test window, is from Tuesday to Thursday. Let's go ahead and knock out our review, guys. Let's go ahead and do some quick recapping, kind of get a lot of good stuff all in one day in one place for you. We'll keep it short and simple. So I'm going to give you guys uh, a second. I want you guys to go ahead and try, try numbers one and number two for me, please. Try number one and try number two. Let's see what you guys can do on those. Go ahead and pause. And so before we check the answer, make sure you have everything labeled correctly, guys. So important to make sure we have everything labeled. We're trying to find the distance from the entrance of the Triangle Park to the walkthrough along Woodbury. So we set up our proportions here because here's our parallel lines that divvy up these pieces so we know that this is proportional with this this is proportional with this those two proportions can be set equal to each other all right so then you end up with 1100 yards for this piece right here for that stretch of woodbury avenue all right now number two once again, the labeling is crucial, guys, and knowing what you want to find is crucial. Check it out. How long is the section of First Street from Elm to Maple Avenue? So in other words, here's First Street from Elm all the way to Maple Avenue, this second row. We want to know how long is this whole piece. Well, here's the problem. We know this is 300. We know this is 1650. We know this is 350. The problem is we don't know how long this piece is. So if you have three pieces, and by the way, parallel lines. So we know these are going to be proportional. And we know whatever this piece of first street between Elm and Oak is, we'll call it X. And this piece between Oak and Ave, uh, Maple Avenue that's 350, we know those are going to be proportional as well. So you guys know what to do. Set it up, X over 350 equals, uh, now be careful here, it's going to be, so now of course we've got 1650, this stretch, which lines up with this one, over its proportion. You guys know the drill. Cross, multiply, divide, and you should end up getting X is... 1925 but here's what we have to be careful this is from oak to elm what do we want we want how long is the section of first street from elm street to maple avenue this whole stretch so if this is 1925 and that is 350 we want the whole piece so add those two together and you end up with 2275. So this was Oak to Elm. We needed from Elm to Maple. All right. Last problem on the page, guys. Let's keep moving. We're moving at a good clip here. So a 72 foot rope is cut into five pieces. Okay. So. Now, the thing is, some of these pieces are going to be longer than others. Ratio of 1, 2, 3, 4, 8. So what is the length and feet of the longest piece? Okay. So 72-foot rope. It's If we add up these five pieces, which remember, if it's a ratio, that means each of these is an unknown exact quantity. So we're going to put an X with each of those ratios. And shouldn't these five pieces add up to be 72 feet? So we got 1x plus 2x plus 3x plus 4x plus 5x plus 
plus 3x plus 4x plus 8x. I guess if you're, if you're trying to make these pieces kind of comparable, and we know they all add up to be 72 feet. Let's do some CLT and some division here. And I'm going to let you guys solve this for X. Go ahead and see if you can do that. Okay. Now, whenever I do that, I get X equals 4. The thing is that we want to know what is the length of the longest piece. So we take that and we plug that back into our biggest piece. So... Longest piece is going to be 8 times 4, or 32 feet. All right, guys. Hey, nice job. We got one page knocked out. On to the next one. All right. So what I'm going to let you guys try number 4 and number 5, part A. And then we are going to kind of work together some on part B, part C, and a few of the rest of these. But go ahead and try number four and number five, part A for me. What is AD over AB in simplest form? And then we're going to have a slope, which is a fraction, over the slope of something else, which is a fraction. And if you get a little stuck, remember, keep, change, flip. So go ahead, guys. All right, so number four, uh, what is AD over AB in simplest form? Well, AD is nine spaces. AB is four spaces, so nine over four. That's already in simplest form. Slope of BE, we go up eight over three. Slope of AE, we go up eight over seven. And when we divide these, you could also much easier keep this fraction, change division to multiplication, and flip. 8 over 7 to 7 over 8. Multiply across, you get 56 over 24. Those are clearly both uh, divisible by an even number. And in this case, we can divide them both by 8 to get 7 over 3. Now, part B. What is a slope that is parallel to, oh, BE? We found that up here. BE has a slope of 8 over 3. Well, guess what? Parallel lines... Remember this from a couple chapters back? Parallel lines have the same slope. So 8 over 3 as well. Same slope. Now, what is the slope of a segment segment, segment that is perpendicular to AE? Oh, so this other line we looked at, 8 over 7. Now, perpendicular. This is where we, we bust out the line. Opposite reciprocal. So these slopes are opposite reciprocals. What that means is we, uh, we opposite, we change the sign. Reciprocal, we flip the fraction. So if this was 8 over 7, change the, the sign. So now it's negative. Flip the fraction, so now kind of like we did here, it is 7 over 8. And then finally, uh, number 6, find the coordinate value of the midpoint of segment AC. So AC is from here to here. So from this stretch, we're pretty much trying to find the point in the middle. Um, and a couple ways you could do this, you could either count to find the point in the middle, 1, two, three, boom. Or you could do the math. Take zero, add it to six, and then just cut that in half. So take this distance and cut it in half. Either way, our point's three. <laughs> Finally, de determine the length of the altitude of CED. So remember, this is the height. And find the area, ooh, you guys remember the area formula for a triangle? Or for a, yeah, for a triangle, area of a triangle equals one-half base times height. And if you remember, that height is going to need to come from our altitude. The base is very clearly going to come from the bottom of the triangle. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up here. 
let's divide this out. So we've got that way we can see the we can see everything in picture here. Okay. So it looks like our base, if it is, we gotta be careful, base of C E D. We're looking at triangle C E D. So this triangle right here. So we see the base is going to be, it looks like one, two, we got a base of three. Now our height is going to be from this piece right here all the way up to E, from the base all the way straight up to this point. Looks like that is from, we're at zero, all the way up to eight. So our height's going to be eight. And so you've got... By the way, there is your uh, altitude. Area of our triangle is going to be one half, three times eight. So three times eight is 24. Cut that in half. You got 12. So, and that would be uh, units. Squared. They didn't tell us. They didn't tell us what the units were. So we'll just do units squared. All right. Last page, guys. Now, on page three, before I let you guys uh, try this one, because we've we've done these two-way probability tables a bunch. We've done these on, um, I believe it was day. We've done these on uh, days one, two, and four. So we've done these on three days already. But just a quick reminder, you always want to kind of glance over what the concept is. So we're talking cell phones. We have a random sample of 2,024. So this is the complete total right here. This is everything all added together. Um, we also have categories. Age is our category up top. So the columns are all age. And then over here, it's type of cell phone, which are all of our rows. And remember, if we're dealing with conditional probability, little reminder, conditional probability, that's whenever you have the word given or assuming. And whatever you're given or assuming, those are going to be, these are going to be your denominators. They could be any of these numbers. That's only with conditional probability, though. Given, assuming, these numbers are going to become your denominators. We're not looking at the complete total with conditional probability. And don't forget the word and means we're going to be looking for a specific, very specific group. And the word or, you're going to have to subtract... Uh, the re repeats, the, the people that repeat. So don't forget, these are the three big things here, guys. The word or, you add, but then you have to subtract the repeats. And we're looking for a specific group. Conditional probability, these are going to be your denominators. So go ahead, guys. See what you can do. We're going to do parts, try the whole thing, A, three for me. This is a big test for us. We're going to have some of these on our test uh, tomorrow, so give it your best shot. Okay. Find the probability that a randomly selected individual is 18 to 34 years old. Okay, so no specifics. So we're using all 2,024 peeps. So our probability we're trying to find is 18 to 34. So we look at the 18 to 34 column. 517 total people. And if you type that into your calculator and simplify, that is 47 over 184. Okay. Or if you wanted to put that as a decimal, about 25 and a half percent, 0.255. Next up, find the probability that a randomly selected individual is an iPhone is an Android user. Well, that's pretty simple. So Android. Once again, we're looking out of all 2,024 peeps. 
Looks like there are, now we're looking at this row, Androids 503. That will not reduce. Uh, as a decimal, that'd be almost 25%, 0.249. Here's where things get a little spicy. Given that a person uses an Android, so now this is our denominator. Remember? So how many people are using Android? It's 503. So we're trying to find the probability that we select someone who is 18 to 34 years old. Given that, that's what that means. You put the slash, given that they're using an Android. So the probability of 18 to 34 year olds given that they're using an Android 503. So we're only looking out of these 503 people. Um, and so we're looking for the age of 18 to 34. Boom, 214 out of 503. And that's almost, uh, actually that's a little over 40%. That'd be 0.425. Now be careful about the wording here. Find the probability that a person is an iPhone user and 35 to 54. Okay. So now, once again, we're looking out of the total number of people. So probability uh, that iPhone and, remember that's what that intersection means, 35 to 54. So we're not given anything. So we're out of 2024. And then iPhone and 35 to 54. Here's iPhone. Let's see. Uh, here's iPhone. Here's 35 to 54. Boom. 171. And that will not reduce. 171 is a prime number. So, or it's about 0.084. Almost 8.5%. And then finally, find the probability that a person is an iPhone user or 35 to 54. Okay, so now we've got uh, an or situation, iPhone four, bust out the U, the union, thirty five to fifty four. Let's see how this one differs from our last one. So we've got iPhone users. That is four hundred sixty seven plus. Let me do that. Uh, thirty five fifty four year olds. There are 637 of those. But there are also people who are iPhone users and 35 to 54 year olds. We have to subtract out. Yep, that's right. These 171 people that are both iPhone users and 35 to 54 year olds. We're counting them twice right now. And of course, this is out of everybody. 2024. See so you add all that up. You end up getting 933 out of 2,024. Once you add those up and subtract. All right. Great job, guys. We got our test uh, tomorrow and over the next couple of days. So try and get that knocked out as soon as you can. Get tests knocked out ASAP. Um, and if you want to, Here's some great, here's just six questions. Great multiple choice. I will put the answers up in a sheet later. Right after this, actually. So you can look for this. It'll be attached. The answers to these six will be attached. Thank you, guys. Have a good uh, rest of your Monday and go Jumpers.